So uh, before we begin tonight, I want to make sure uh, those of you who have never been to a Town Hall Tuesday know uh, that we are uh, broadcasting this live on our city website and on social media. Uh, so please uh, make sure you take your uh, phones and put them on silent. If you do need to take a phone call, uh, please step out into the hallway and so you're uh, not disturbing anybody. And then uh, uh, if you have a question, uh, we're going to ask you to wait through the presentations. But uh, when we get to that point, make sure you raise your hand if you have a question so we can bring you a microphone so uh, the people who are watching can hear your question. And so when it comes to uh, the services that we provide, uh, streets, uh, water, and trash, those are the things that touch residents every single day. And uh, we understand how important these services are. And when we uh, make changes, they, uh, uh, they can be cause concern. So uh, our solid waste program uh, visits your house five times a week, 52 weeks a year. Rain, shine, snow, cold weather, all of those things that disrupt our lives, we still collect your trash. And uh, they're just so if you don't uh, fully utilize all five, we have two solid waste collections, your Monday, Monday, Thursday, or Tuesday, Friday. You have your recycling collection, you have your yard waste collection, and then you have your bulk collection. And then if you have an appliance, you can call us and we will come to your house and collect your refrigerator, stove, dishwasher, anything like that. And we pick up everything. We will pick up everything but hazardous waste, tires, concrete, those sort of things. But anything you want to put out in your trash, we will collect it. And we do this for the, the price of $23.25 a month. So if you think about how many times we visit your house for those for that monthly fee, we believe we provide a pretty good service. And if you compare your, our service to area cities, uh, if you look over at Dallas, you can only place bulk items out once every six weeks, not every week like you can here in Mesquite. You have to use a specific size trash can in Dallas. And if you want to use more, you have to pay more for that can. And most cities run their trash service like that with limitations. There are very few cities in the Metroplex that have the level of service that we provide. And I will put our uh, level of service up uh, against any other city for the cost that, uh, that you pay. But we are starting to experience issues as we're growing and as our city changes. And as you look around town, I believe most of you will, can point out an area that is littered with trash and debris. And if you've been out on a clean, out, clean up with uh, the trash bash or keep mesquite beautiful, you've probably found more trash than you believed is, is in an area. And we can uh, debate where the sources of trash come from, but uh, it's a variety of sources. It comes from our businesses, it comes from people being careless in parking lots, but a lot of the trash that you find in our creeks and in our drainage system is actually coming from our neighborhoods. And that's trash that's left to blow uh, in an alley. It washes down and gets into our creeks. And so as the citizen surveys came back and complaints have come in, uh, community appearance continues to be one of the uh, primary concerns of residents. And because of that, we began some efforts to see what we could do different. And uh, we've surveyed residents, we've done pilot programs, we've really studied how we collect trash and things that we can do that can enhance the service while also uh, limiting the amount of trash that's, that's blown in neighborhoods. And what we're calling this is our Clean City Initiative. Last fall, we gathered a committee of citizens who met with staff, heard presentations, and talked about uh, the issues at hand. And so we, the Clean City Initiative, which you see the logo on the screen now, is our tagline. That's how we're going to do things a little bit different. We're combining the resources of Keep Mesquite Beautiful, Environmental Code, Parks and Recreation, and our solid waste programs. 
Uh, in the past, we've kind of run separate programs and separate things. Now we're going to start working closer together. We're going to be changing ordinances when it comes to uh, commercial property, uh, when it comes to our um, code notice or the code program, and we're going to do more neighborhood cleanups. We're going to have adopt a spots. We're going to have spots where groups of uh, from schools, from churches, from businesses can go out and take care of an area of the city. But tonight we're going to talk about one of the most uh, uh, important parts of the Clean It City initiative, which is the changes to our trash program. And, it's, uh, and it really affects our neighborhoods. And uh, it, you maybe think that it's, uh, it, it doesn't affect you. Your, your neighborhood's clean. You may not have trash problems in your neighborhood. You may not see the same problems. And a lot of people uh, that I've talked to recently have, uh, have, have told me just that, that they've been putting out their trash in bags for years and they've never had a problem. Their alley is clean. Why do I need a trash can? We have renters that move out of their house on a regular basis. We have people cleaning out before moving. We have trash placed too early and it's scattered by animals. We have daily deposits of bulky items. We have wild animals and loose dogs digging through trash. We have trash just left by the trash cans or dumped. We have trash on top of bags, which makes it more difficult for our staff to collect. We have them in unauthorized containers like boxes and wooden containers, oversized cans that are too heavy for us to lift, multiple bags, large volumes of trash. I don't know how to explain that one. Uh, mixed items, you see your brush and trash and carpet all thrown out together. You see cans that are easily knocked over and left to blow around. You have construction debris. A lot of contractors leave their construction debris out on a daily basis. You have loose trash combined with bag trash. You have uh, improper bags, shopping bags. You have boxes. Everybody gets boxes uh, from online shopping. And again, another move out with excessive amounts of trash. Mixed garbage. High volumes of trash in every neighborhood. And when it blows, it stays in the alley until somebody picks it up. Just volumes of trash are increasing. People using boxes to throw away their loose mm -hmm. trash. So those are just some of the examples that we find each and every day throughout Mesquite. Uh, if you don't realize, we, have, we service about 36,000 homes each week. And so if you can imagine the ways people throw out trash and that our trash uh, staff have to go out and collect these. And on a typical route, you'll have two men going out and collecting about 900 homes a day. And so when they have to stop down and col collect trash, the high volumes, things that are illegally placed, improperly placed, it slows us down. So instead of adding more people, we're doing our best to change some of the behaviors to make it easier for us to collect the trash and get into the, and keep the neighborhoods cleaner. And because of the significance of this change, uh, we want to take our time with this. So the council adopted this ordinance back in June. And we've uh, slowly put out information trying to educate residents. O October 1st was our implementation day. To date, it's just been a couple of weeks, we haven't issued any fees. And we don't plan on issuing any fees in, for months. We are going to begin the process of notifying neighbors. We are going to have door hangers. We are going to tag the improper containers. We are going to work to educate those who need, who have issues with the way they put out their trash. We also know that this can create a hardship for many people who are disabled 
or unable to carry their, uh, to walk to the alley or to the street or push a trash can and all of that. Ever since I've been here for 25 years, our solid waste staff have made exceptions for those who are in need. We go up to a garage on the outside of the door and we'll go pick up the trash from there. We even go into the garage or up to the uh, door and we will take the trash from the resident. We want to make sure that nobody uh, is put into a, a situation where they cannot dispose of trash because of the words on the ordinance. And I hope that the pictures that we show and the explanations tonight uh, help you understand a little bit of the why behind this ordinance. We're not doing this because uh, we've dreamed it up. This is not something that we, we've seen somewhere else and said, this is going to work here. This is utilization of uh, many years of staff expertise, the guys out in the field telling us the things that they are encountering. It's taking the comments from citizens who are just tired of going outside of their house and seeing bulk trash placed every single day of the week and added onto by neighbors, by people driving down the street, people going through the bulk trash, and then those who, who live near the, our open spaces who have wild animals, raccoons, possums, coyotes, all impact trash. And those are things that we have to uh, live with, but there are things that we can do to prevent that. And so that's the purpose and the why behind the ordinance. So at this time, I'd like to invite Public Works Director Kurt Cassidy up to explain some of the elements of the ordinance, and then, uh, then we'll get to questions. Thank you. Good evening. As Cliff said, my name is Kurt Cassidy. I'm the Director of Public Works. He gave you the reasons behind why the ordinance changes. I'm going to give you an overview of the ordinance changes and then try to get into the weeds a little bit and provide some details as to why we set some of the specific limitations. So the ordinance changes really are comprised of four pillars uh, to, to improve the, the city appearance and eliminate litter. We're asking that you uh, put all your trash in a bag. The bag be 13 to 32 gallons. All your bag trash be in a trash can. It doesn't have to have a lid, but we prefer it. We ask that you set your trash out no earlier than 5.30 p.m. the day before your scheduled pickup. No later than 7.30 the morning of your scheduled pickup. And then to collect the cans on the day of scheduled pickup by no later than 8 p.m. <coughs> For bulk trash set out, we, we ask that you not set that out earlier than 24 hours prior to your scheduled pickup for bulk trash. And then we uh, restricted the uh, amount of bulk trash to eight cubic yards. And we'll get into some of the details as to how that can be defined. So first, the, the trash bags. Let's talk about why we want 13 to 32 gallons and the significance of that. So we ask that they not be smaller than 13 gallons. What we're trying to avoid, of course, are these. This seems uh, logical, but uh, we get these all the time. They're easy to break. Uh, once they break, the trash is removed or spilled out, and then they're blown all over the alleys and the streets. Um, the, the 13, the reason for the 13 is that's your normal kitchen can, right? 13 gallon can. So, Got your 13 gallon. You think I'd already opened these? You know what the 13 gallon can bag looks like. The 32 gallon. This is still. This is a lot of trash. That's 32 gallons. Right? Okay. 
what we're trying to avoid with setting the maximum limitation are these. Most of us don't see these. But you would be surprised how many of these that are set out completely full. Now we have a limitation of 50 pounds for your trash bag. Can you guess what a 64 gallon bag would uh, weigh when it's completely full? The bag probably cannot even hold it. So like Cliff said, we have uh, 36,000 homes. So we have 20 routes that are ran per day. That means each truck has to hit 1,000 homes. Those two guys on that truck are lifting 50 pounds, three bags, five bags at 1,000 homes. So that's why we set the limitations for the 50, 50 pounds, the 32 gallon bags. That's why we put these restrictions on there. Do not place loose trash around bags. We talked about that. I mean, it's, it just takes more time for the guys. They're hitting a thousand homes and if they got to pick up soda bottles, trash, can, um, trash bags, um, what else? Pizza boxes, uh, loose debris, cans. It takes time. They're less efficient. And if they're not efficient, then they can't get to everyone. And then they're working overtime and then and they know how I feel about overtime. So, boxes. We also get a bunch of these. You've seen quite a few of these in the, uh, in the pictures. Mostly we get Amazon boxes, right? We, we get the uh, real small boxes to the large boxes. And once they get uh, some juice in them or some type of liquid, what happens? The box becomes compromised, it falls through, and then they're there picking up that. So um, that's why we set the limitations. We, we tell you what kind of bags to use. Um, not in an effort to be controlling, it's in an effort for efficiency and a cleaner city appearance. Flatten large box, put them next to cans. So if you have a box that's too large, that won't fit inside your can. You can do one of two things. You can flatten it, put it between your cans. You can flatten it, put it under your can. You can put it alongside your can and make sure it's secured so it doesn't blow away. We will pick it up. We will make sure that we collect it. Get rid of all my bags. All right, on to the trash cans. So here is your 20 gallon trash can. This is the minimum size. So why the 20 gallon? Because anything smaller than this, once the trash is taken out of it, it becomes part of the litter. It's very light and it'll blow down the street. Those 13 gallon kitchen cans, those are very light. I mean, not everyone's front yard is even in their driveway, right? So that they tip over uh, and then they're blown down the street. So they contribute to the litter and the community appearance. So customers can use their current cans. If you have a 64 gallon can, you can continue to use that until you, you replace it with something within the ordinance. Um, if you have the large 96 gallon carts, we will service those, but we will not tip those. I cannot have uh, guys out there trying to lift 96 gallon carts and dump them. When I say service them, that means they will reach inside, grab the bags, and put them in the truck. If there's loose debris, there's trash intermingled, 
Uh, we will probably knock on your door, ask you to please uh, bag the rest of the trash, and once it's bagged, we will come get it. So like I said before, lids are not required, but they're preferred. Place cans in alley or front of curb, that, that has not changed. No limit in the quantity of cans, again, that has not changed. Um, this is one of the few cities that I've seen that does not have a limitation on the number of cans. We just finished our solid waste master plan, and that was one thing that uh, the consultant told us. We had, they had not seen someone, a city, that did not limit the amount of trash you set out. And then we covered do not place loose trash in the can. Okay, the, the pickup times. So the set out time for uh, residential solid waste, no earlier than 5.30 p.m. the day prior to your scheduled pickup. And the reason behind that is we just, you know, that's the community appearance, right? Uh, we don't want cans sitting out for two, three days. It invites animals to knock it over, um, set trash out no later than 7.30 a.m. I've, I've heard that question come up quite a bit. Why, they don't get here till 2 o'clock. Why, why do I got to set it out by 7.30? It's a good question. Um, our guys start work at 7.30, and most of them have done their pre-trips they're ready to go. They got a lot of work to get done. They're ready to leave the yard at 730. Some homes are going to get hit as soon as they leave. Some homes will be later in the schedule. Sometimes we'll have schedule changes. We'll have to hit a neighborhood later or earlier than what we normally do. So we just want to make sure that when we come by, that you're provided your solid waste service. So that way we set a uniform set out at 7.30 a.m. If it's set out by 7.30, we're going to get it. And then we ask you to remove the cans by no later than 8 p.m. the day of the pickup. And again, that's just for community appearance. Bulk items, no earlier than 24 hours prior to pickup. If you have a special situation where, say, your uh, deep freeze goes out, and man, that thing, it sat there for a couple of days before I realized it stinks. I don't want it in the house. I'm taking it out. You can call Solid Waste, and they will come get it. There's a small fee associated with it because it's a special pickup. We're breaking our normal route. I think it's twenty dollars but it's a small fee to come get it outside of the uh, normal normal schedule so the bulk trash we we limit the bulk trash to eight cubic yards now if uh, you're not an, an engineer or someone that deals with volumes you're going what what is eight cubic yards well we generally describe it in the ordinance by five feet high I'm a little taller than five feet but five feet high four feet deep by 11 foot long and I guarantee you that none of our solid waste guys are going to bring a tape measure out and start measuring your pile of bulk waste we just we're not going to do that we're not looking to to issue administrative fees we just have to restrict it somehow. So uh, eight cubic yards, again, that's two full-size pickup trucks, the bed filled up to the top of the cab, two of those. If you think about that, that's quite a bit. That's a lot of, um, that's a lot of bulk items. It can also be described by two very large couches. Uh, I would say that would be sectionals with ottomans but the, those are large couches. And then special circumstances. Um, you know, we're here for y'all. We're here for the residents of Mesquite. 
So if you have a special circumstance, you call the solid waste number, 972-216-6285 or 6284. Let us know your special circumstance. We're going to work with you. I can tell you that uh, Cliff's not exaggerating when he says that we have guys that, these guys in the back, they, they go inside garages to get, them for, get the uh, containers for some elderly people that can't make it to the curb. There are some disabled folks that, you know, they can't make it with the can, so we'll go get that for them. We're here to serve you, so call us and let, let us know what your circumstance is, and, and we will help. And then the administrative fees. Um, as I said before, we're not out to uh, issue a bunch of administrative fees. That's not, that's not our goal. Um, when we notice a violation, we're going to knock on your door. We're going to educate you as to why it's a violation. We see it again, we're going to re-educate you why it's a violation. And then if there is a special circumstance, we'll, we'll figure that out. But um, like Cliff said, we're, we're just trying to improve the community appearance and lim limit the amount of litter. Uh, each violation, when there is an administrative fee that needs to be assessed, there will be a picture taken. It will be brought back to a supervisor. They'll put their eyes on it and say, hmm. If it's close, we're going to give you the benefit of the doubt. Um, and then special exceptions for holidays. Yes, if there's a holiday, the set out times, I mean, we're, we're going to work with everyone. We're, we're not out to just distribute administrative fees. So, Thank you, Kurt. And I, I wanted to just reiterate on the, um, the holidays. We know Thanksgiving and Christmas are um, excessive. There's excessive trash those days. We know that we don't pick up on all of those days of those weeks. Those are times where we'll provide exceptions. So uh, before we get to questions, I just uh, w wanted to uh, point out a, a few people in the room. Uh, Kirk kind of pointed to uh, Tim, Ronald, Kenneth, and Charles in the back. You guys that are sitting, stand up just so everybody can see. So uh, these are the guys in charge of solid waste and have done so for many, many years. And they, they are the reason why we have such great service. So if y'all wouldn't mind, they've had a little bit of a rough patch uh, this past uh, couple of years with COVID, uh, with the excessive amount of trash and people out. And now with the labor shortage, uh, right now we're running about 40% uh, below uh, staffing levels. So what this means is each of these guys are out there picking up trash as well as the, uh, their, their workers. They're out there checking for any missed trash or any, anything special that goes on. These are the guys that are handling it. So if you wouldn't mind, give them a big hand. Appreciate all you do, guys. So uh, at this time, uh, we're happy to answer any questions. If you do not want to speak on the microphone, I know some people uh, are afraid of doing that. Staff will be around all, all until everybody's gone to answer any questions. We also have comment cards uh, at, at the table over here. If you don't get a chance to ask a question or you need to go, feel free to ask your question, leave your contact information and we'll do, your, do our best to get in touch with you and answer that question. We will use all of the questions for our frequently asked questions to populate so people who are not here, uh, uh, we can try to do our best to, to educate people. So Wayne, um, we have someone over there with their hand up. So, I have a question. I have what I call handicapped service right now because I'm handicapped myself. Is, will that still continue? Absolutely. We oh. will, uh, no, no changes for any of those special circumstances. Oh, okay. So if you've already got them, yeah. we should remember if we miss it, sometimes we'll have guys that are unfamiliar with that route. Yeah. Okay. And so all it, all it is is a call to the 6285 number okay. and we will make sure. And anybody who knows a resident that may be struggling and all of that, please help communicate that 
It's just a call. Thank you. So we've got a woman in the red back here. May we still use the garbage, the Walmart sacks, if we put them in the sack? Absolutely. In the can? Absolutely, yes. I mean, as long as we tie it up. Yeah, as, as, we're really looking for it to be all as much contained in the big bag. Yes, ma'am. I know a lot of the trash comes from residents, but also businesses, because yes. I myself go out and pick up at Absolutely. businesses. What are you doing to address that in addition to this? That's my first question. The second question is, if we have bulk items, do we have to call or will it automatically be picked up? Uh, so I'm going to answer the last one first. Uh, bulk service does not change on the weekly pickup. You are uh, still able to put it out. We're just asking you to put it out closer to that pickup day. And so that, that's the change there. Now, if you want to clean out your garage on a Saturday or Sunday and go ahead and put everything out to the curb and all of that, then that's a special call to us. And then we will charge a fee for coming out uh, in a, ahead of the, your um, uh, normal pickup. Is Thursday the bulk trash pickup for everybody? No, ma'am. What day is it? It's it just different? depends on where you live. Okay. okay. So, and I, I don't have those memorized. Please don't quiz me on that. So, and then uh, your first question was business trash. Absolutely. If you drive uh, by, and I'll, I'll be happy to point them out. Uh, Walmart. Yes. If, if you look along uh, US 80, the southern winds blow everything that's dropped in the parking lot, every Walmart bag, everything. It blows up against the highway, and on a good day, it'll blow it. Uh, all the way north to Trip Road. So we are working on our ordinances with businesses. We are also approaching the, the trashy businesses to encourage them to put more trash cans out, to have more staff to go out and pick up trash after people. So it's, it's a behavior change for them. And those are the things that we were working on with our uh, code ordinance revision. Yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, most of the problems I've noticed is with empty houses, people moving in and out. You know. Yes, ma'am. And the trash gets all over their yards and stuff. And mm -hmm. what what do we do about that? Uh, we, They're gone. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, we um, are able to assess that fee uh, after after the fact. There um, there is a, they have to pay a final water bill. And so we will assess that. And if it's a rental property, then it's the homeowner's responsibility. The landlord would pay that fee for um, that renter moving out. And a lot of the times it is landlords. After somebody has moved out, didn't move their stuff out, the landlords will just push everything to the street. So we want the landlords to be held accountable as well. Wouldn't the landlords get a dumpster to put anything in? You would Aren't think, yes. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the easy way. It does cost money. And then they can work with us. We have a, a service called Cost Plus. So if a landlord does have a, a large amount of trash that they want to move out, they call us and schedule a pickup. And uh, we'll come out there uh, and do a special pickup for them. And it's a lot more than the $20. OK, there's uh, another question is, what about loose trash like a broom, mop? I know they sound trivial, but those are the things you got to stick in the button, in the button. containers, uh, yeah, the, water the, hoses, and, and and those those are the nuances of the trash collection. If you are making an effort to put things in a can, in a bag, in a can, and you have a broom sitting on in your trash can or next to the trash can, we're going to pick it up and we're not going to assess you a fee. Okay. Okay. So that's the, we're, we're trying to achieve that loose trash stuff, those special circumstances. We're going to defer to the resident and not, uh, not try to enforce anything. Oh, okay. Uh, I've got one more question because I've sure. got an issue at my own house. I've got a stump that two to three men can stay in the middle of. I had a tree cut down, but it's just one stump. It's been laying in my yard for over a month. I can't get anybody out there to pick it up. <laughs> so I, I'm going to say you're looking at the right person, uh, <laughs> the man in the white shirt back sorry. there. So um, after after I've the meeting, twice. Yeah, ma'am. After the meeting, if you will talk to uh, uh, Ronald, um, 
he'll he'll make arrangements to help you out. We've got it's, you're not the first person to have that problem. Thank so, you. And I didn't uh, mean to grab <laughs> woman in the pink and and in the blue back there. So grass clippings don't have to go in the trash bag, right? They can be still in the trash cans, right? They can stay uh, stay out. I'm looking back to, uh, we are not addressing, what you're doing now with yard waste is fine because that's typically not an issue for us. Very few people do put the clippings in the cans. Most people mulch, but uh, we would prefer them to be in bags so they're easier for us to, they can get heavy, especially if they get wet. Okay, and we have rear entry garages. We, do, we don't have to remove our trash cans from the alley, correct? No, not at this time. The, the removal is mainly for trash that's being put out on uh, the, the front end trees or people who use the, the, the street for trash. Uh, I'm sorry, I'll get to you. We have a little bit of an issue, not in the alley, but out in the street. Two newspapers, Dallas Morning News Freebie and the Mesquite News Freebie. I've picked up more of those in the street and tossed them into the yard. I understand, you know, they need to distribute that. But the other thing is the fast food waste, that in masks and rubber gloves. I, I don't know how much of that I've picked up, but that's in the front of the house. Are you, we're okay with the rest of it and we're good with everything else, but those are probably two yeah. or three things that are kind of a hiccup for us. Yeah, the un un unintended impacts of COVID is now we've got parking lots and streets littered with masks and, and gloves. But, and we do understand the issue with the newspapers. And if you are getting, if it's getting excessive, usually the newspaper companies see the ones that are laying out in the street unread and they'll just go to another part of the uh, city to do that. And then, and then they do rotate. Um, there is a number um, that uh, on our website, and if you've, it, it's hit or miss. I've I've had some success with it, but sometimes it doesn't stop, and unfortunately, they have the right to distribute that newspaper. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, back to the bulk trash. Um, is there a particular day that they pick the bulk trash up, or is it as seen or as called? No, uh, well, because excuse the reason me. I say that is in my neighborhood, it seems like there's a home there that's been remodeling our house since the freeze of February, okay? And trash, we had, we, we had trash picked up today uh, that was stacked out in front, but it was there about seven or eight days, yeah. not only there, but at the front door, yeah. you know, for a so, while. So, and that's, that's one of the exact reasons why we compressed that time because there are people uh, with contractor debris or um, who just, it seems like they're cleaning out their garage every evening and continue to put stuff out. So uh, the contractor waste can be a special call. If you're remodeling, you should get a dumpster. Um, if you wanna make special arrangements with us, we can. But bulk trash is, is done on a set schedule most of the time. I will say right now, because of the labor shortage, we do run a little bit behind. So you will see them out there on Saturdays and Sundays running routes to catch up. But typically, it's on uh, a certain day, and that information's on our website. Well, <clears throat> yeah, and I, and I appreciate that, the, the, the guys picking that bulk trash up, but today especially, to get rid of the bulk trash. But what is left now, because it is a contractor, and they don't, uh, take care of their water bottles, their face masks, their other general little small debris. And I don't blame that on the guy that picked it up. He picked up all the big stuff and he's got places he's got to be. But there's still stuff that's going to blow up and down the street now if somebody doesn't pick that up. And, and, and that's where it turns into a code issue. That's not somebody putting out their trash improperly. That's just littering, in our opinion. And that's where code enforcement will come in. So if you will afterwards Chris raise your hand Chris Sanchez if you will give him that address we'll make sure code enforcement okay. uh, visits that street and that's where uh, we need your help and if you see somebody that's just littering in their yards report it to to code Miss Patterson right here quick question on um, 
Gus Thompson, there's a vacant lot, and they've had a pile of debris there. Is it yard waste? Uh, um, it looks like leaves and trash. Yeah. Um, we're not sure where that came from. It's illegal dumping, but I, I think uh, we're trying to catch that on this week's route. Um, okay. So d did we get it? No. Is it still there? No, it's it, it, uh, still there. Okay. Um, get with me afterwards and we'll find out where it's at. But th those are things, if it's a vacant property and if it's a vacant house, the, that becomes a problem as well because once somebody f sees that pile of trash, they continue to keep piling and piling and stuff there because they think somebody will eventually pick it up and that's where illegal dumping comes in. That was a case of illegal dumping in, if on a, a vacant property. So normally we would ask the um, property owner to, to take care of it, but since it's on a thoroughfare, we will probably come by and pick it up. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, all of this uh, special circumstances, uh, do you charge an extra fee for that? No, ma'am. If you are disabled or have an inability to bring the trash to the proper location, a physical limitation, we're not going to charge you for that. Okay. My second question is really not a question, it's a statement, is uh, everybody's talking about the loose trash and everything. Fortunately, in our area where we're at, we don't have that problem. Our problem is when the trash flies out of the trash truck and they leave it. They don't pick it up then we have to come along and pick it up. That's my problem. And, and that is a common problem with the trash not being put in bags. It so, will blow, oh, it'll no, blow this up. is where they're in bags and okay. they broke the bags. Okay. So, well, yeah, it's both. Okay. It's not just one. Right. And then I have a complaint about how they did handle the trash cans. I bought a brand new trash can. The very first time I put it out, they flipped the lid off of it, broke the lid. Next time around, they broke the handle. I mean, so I don't have that kind of money to keep replacing a garbage can and stuff because, uh, because of their negligence on their, their job. If you feel like we've damaged your trash can, call, call Solid Waste and somebody will, will help take care of the, the issue. Um, we have, we have a labor, the labor shortage. I understand, and, but and that was before of, COVID hit or know, anything else. But so. in, in, on a normal course of a year, we are training uh, dozens of new staff. And we, it's, it's, it's a tough job. Like Kurt said, they're going around. A th if you can imagine picking up 100 pounds a thousand times over an eight-hour period, it, it wears you out. It's not for everybody. And so we do have to train a lot of people. And, and granted, customer service can always be improved. So I, I promise that we talk about it probably about uh, every other week. And so we're, we're going to continue to work on it. Right. But Thank you. Let us know. First of all, I just want to say thank you for picking up my trash twice a week. I really appreciate that. I also want to thank you for not putting the limit on, on how many um, cans we can use as far as putting dump out. And I want to comment that the gentlemen that have picked up my trash for the last 30 years have been very courteous, very helpful, and they have done a wonderful job. So thank you for that. My um, question is more of a comment as far as the 24 hours on a bulk item. Um, just as an example for myself, I had a very heavy desk in my house. It weighed over 100 pounds. Um, I ended up sawing it in two to get it out because my daughter was in this weekend to help me. So for older people and single people that may not have the help to get a bulky item out, um, there's a concern with trying to make sure that it's just within 24 hours of the pickup time because I can't always guarantee when I can get the help to get something out. But it's not all over the trash and it won't blow down the street. Those are the circumstances that, you know, unfortunately the, the new regulations impact. That, that doesn't happen to a, a lot of people a lot of the time. So in, in those situations, what I would suggest is that you call us and try to work out a, an arrangement on when we, if we can be in the area and, and do that on a, on a special circumstance, especially if that's the only time and you're, uh, you're limited on how you can get it out. And also what we would encourage is that maybe, is, is it worth $20 to have somebody come and, come and grab it uh, a few days early? But 
but we're always willing to try to work with residents to, to help you out. I'd say we, if you talk to those guys, they'd probably come into the, the house and come um, pick it up, but I, I can't have them, I can't tell them to do that. So. Anyone else have any questions? Yes, ma'am. Absolutely, yes. Thank, thank you for bringing that up. The uh, city has a, uh, what's called a convenience center, and it's also our compost facility. So every day of the week, but Wednesdays and Sundays, you can take uh, a pickup truck load of trash to the convenience center and, and dump it there. How so, often can you do that? Is there any rules of that? Uh, typically, we, it's once a month. Uh, yeah, it's, it's once a month for the large items. We have some residents that um, have issues with animals or something and they want to dispose of it. We'll, we'll make a, a few exceptions if it's just a bag here and there. But really it's a pickup truck size load once a month is what we're trying for. My husband uses 42 gallon, those bags that you were showing. Um, we have a rack. We have a our trash is picked up in the back alley, and we have a rack, a metal rack, that has two cans in it. Of course, when he uses one of those bags, it kind of comes up over the can, but it is very much close. He can't use those at all anymore. We, we would prefer not to. If you can imagine just how heavy those can get. Um, so if, if you can adjust to a smaller bag and, and leave it in. Yeah. So I'd have to, like, cut them off and have them smaller <laughs> What I, I would suggest is you save those up for your bulk, any bulk trash that you need to put out, and then put it out with your bulk trash. Okay, so if you're putting something out with the bulk trash, you're still putting out a bag. It's okay. It's okay. But that's okay. I'll if it's, it. yeah. But use those up and then buy, buy yeah, some new ones. Yeah. Can you give me the address of the uh, convenience? It is out on Lawson Road, um, just south of Cartwright Road. Anybody want to help me with the address spec? 3550 Lawson Road is the address for our convenience center. For And you can also take recycling out there. You can take uh, uh, appliances. If you want to do those things yourself, that's, that's a service we provide. And also, your yard waste goes out there, and we grind it all up, and we have mulch and compost for free for residents. So if you're doing your gardening next spring, you can come out there and get it. A, a truckload. So, yes, sir. On the uh, boxes that you break down, does that go with the day of your recycling? Yes, sir. We we want to distinguish that they need to be broken down and placed with your trash for those who do not recycle. If you do recycle, we will still pick up your cardboard boxes uh, just as normal. So, but please break them down to make them easier to handle. Anyone else? Well, again, we're going to be here until all questions are answered. And um, so uh, feel free if you didn't get a chance to ask a question. Uh, staff is here uh, to help you. Um, but most of all, I want to thank you for your time. Uh, it is a big deal. We understand that. And the more people who understand what we're trying to do and can talk to their neighbors, uh, we really appreciate it. So thank you for your time. I'm sorry, I, uh, one more duty. It was a, very important for my job. Uh, so we do have a couple of council members here and I'd like to invite the council members up if they would like to say a few words. Hey, thanks everybody. I'm going to pull the mask down so you can hear me. Councilman Kenny Green, District 2. I just want to thank everybody for coming out. I mean, you know, when we pass ordinances, when we make changes like this, it's important because it does affect everybody. You know, we're here to hear what your concerns are, to take them to heart. If there's things about this ordinance that come up that we end up seeing and we need to tweak, we can do that. There's nothing set in stone. We're just trying to make the city a better, cleaner place, and this is a starting point. So uh, I just, I'm really appreciative of the efforts of Cliff, uh, Kurt, everybody else that spoke tonight, and everybody that's worked on this ordinance. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll be here in the back as well, uh, as well as the other councilmen will probably stick around as well. So feel free to come up if you have any questions. But I just want to thank each and every one of you because 
You're what makes our city great. So thank you guys. Good afternoon. I am B.W. Smith, City Councilman in District 5, and thank you all for being here tonight. When we passed this ordinance back in June, um, I will tell you it was after a lot of labor, and I won't say a labor of love because it was not. And going back from June to probably a year before at my district meetings that I had in District 5, this ordinance has been the topic of many discussions long before we ever passed it. And as controversial as it might be now, it was as controversial as it was then when I would ask a group of uh, people, what do you think about this ordinance? And if we pass it, what do you think the pros and the cons are? And I got just as many pros as, as I did cons about, about the ordinance. But as things progressed, the, the council, we just felt a need that we needed to do something different because with our Clean City Initiative, and if you've ever been on one of our trash, what I call a trash run, where we gather on a Saturday in large groups and we go out and we pick up trash, and it's not uncommon, I think this last time, what did we pick up, 4,300 pounds of trash? A couple of weeks ago, we picked up 4,300 pounds of trash. So there is a need for this. <clears throat> now, one thing that uh, I said at a couple of meetings ago at a pre-meeting in this very room, as we were talking about this ordinance, um, is our, our direction as a city council to, to the city manager and to staff, and my words were exactly, let's treat this ordinance very gingerly. Because it is something new, it is something different, there's pros and there's cons, and we understand there's issues to be worked out, and so my instructions, our instructions were to treat this ordinance very gingerly in that we, we really don't want to assess a fee to anyone. We do not want to make this a burden on anybody un under any circumstances. Our goal is to make our city cleaner. So we have the ordinance, and then we have what I call the spirit of the ordinance. Now, it's in the spirit of the ordinance that we, the city manager, the staff, everyone involved, under the spirit of the ordinance, we are more than willing to compromise and meet you halfway on any issue that you have and work through this before there's ever any type of a fee assessed for anything. So please understand that we want to work with you, that this is not designed to penalize anyone. We really want to, we really want to make Mesquite the cleanest city in America. We can do that if we all work together, and I feel like that we made the right choice, however controversial as you may think it is, I think that we made the right choice when we passed this ordinance in June for our goal to be to, to pick up trash and to make our neighborhoods clean, cleaner. And I think together, if we work together, we can achieve that goal. And again, thank you all for being here tonight. Thank you, uh, Tandy Burroughs, uh, council member in District 4. Just wanna say thank you for coming out here tonight it's always a great feeling when we have a town hall meeting and we see all the residents that come out. This is where we can answer the questions. We hear the questions that the residents want. We're able to answer those questions. And so I, I, I love being here tonight and seeing the tables full of people here. Uh, so just thank you all for coming out. Uh, Councilman Smith there just, I mean, he's, he answered it multiple times. We did not pass this to put a bunch of fees on any of our citizens. We are trying to clean our city up. We hear it. We know there's a problem out there. Me and Mr. Smith have worked many times together, picking up trash together, uh, and several other. Tammy Joe has been out there many times, and us other citizens have been out there you know, working to pick up trash, and we know there's a problem out there, and we're trying to figure out a way to help stop it. Uh, do we have all the answers? No. But with the citizens working and staff working, Cliff and all of, all of us working together, we can help make this a cleaner city. And so thank you very much for coming out here tonight. I was going to be in trouble if I didn't give the council members a chance to speak. So thank you for a little bit extra time. 
So uh, again, thank you for being here tonight. And uh, if, if you do have questions, we'll be here afterwards and uh, we'll answer uh, until all the questions are asked. So again, thank you and have a good week.